These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There is a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm or you can just use the link in the info box. By the way, I also offer tutoring via Skype and you can find more information about that Skype tutoring service at my website. Thanks. What type of functional group is this? Oh my goodness. Um, not aldehyde. That is an aldehyde. An aldehyde. That's right. Good. What type of functional group is this? That would be a ketone. Good. Now this is what we would call an acyl chloride. Or in general, if we use X for a halogen, it would be an acyl halide. Carbonyl connected to a halogen. Right. Do you know what type of functional group this is? Anhydride. Oh, it's good that you know that. A lot of people don't know that. Is this an anhydride? No, because there's no oxygen. A lot of people make that mistake. But without the oxygen, it's not an anhydride. Good. What type of functional group do we have here? Yeah, it's a carboxylic acid. What type of functional group is this? That's a good question. Um, would that be an ester? All right, now we actually got these flipped. This is the ester, and this is the carboxylic acid. Now, one way to keep that in mind is, remember, an acid is somebody who wants to donate a proton. Mm -hmm. This is an acid because it's willing to donate this proton. Well, this doesn't have that proton, so we wouldn't think of it as an acid. So this is the ester. What type of functional group is this? I know the NH2 is in a name, right? That's good. And NH2 attached to a normal alkane carbon would be an amine. This is what we call an amide. Although I've noticed some people call them amides. And they might be wrong and I might be wrong. So I'm not sure if it's amide or amide. But anyway, it's not amine. So it's amide with a D, and this is amine with an N. An amide is when the nitrogen is attached to a carbonyl carbon. And an amine is when the nitrogen is attached to a normal alkane, normal alkane carbon. very important for peptide chemistry to know the difference between amines and amides. So we're already starting to see some important chemistry for peptide chemistry, not confusing amines and amides. Even though they look similar, they have very different reactivity. Hopefully we'll get to that later. Well, by the way, these don't have to be hydrogens. These could be carbon chains. The nitrogen here could be attached to one or two carbon chains instead of the hydrogens. And these could be carbon chains too. The key is not whether these are hydrogens or not. The key is whether you have a nitrogen attached to a carbonyl or a nitrogen attached to a normal alkane carbon. All of these are called carboxylic acid derivatives. These four are called carboxylic acid derivatives. You can see why they're called derivatives because they're very similar in form to the carboxylic acid. So there's a sense in which these forms are derived from the carboxylic acid. So these are the carboxylic acid derivatives. This is carboxylic acid. Now, aldehydes and ketones are not carboxylic acid derivatives. They're their own separate category. So basically, we have three different types of things here. We have aldehydes and ketones. That's one group. We have carboxylic acids. Maybe that's its own group. 
And then there's carboxylic acid derivatives, which are their own group. Actually, carboxylic acids are very similar to acid derivatives. So in a sense, there's only two groups. In a sense, there's the acid and acid derivatives, and then there's the aldehydes and ketones. Last time we met, we spent the whole time working on aldehydes and ketones, and we still only covered a fraction of the reactions there. We went over some of the most important reactions. We saw that nucleophiles can attack aldehydes and ketones, and we called those category one, category two, and category three based on whether the nucleophile attacks once, that's category one, or two separate nucleophiles attack, that would be category two, or the same nucleophile attacks twice, that would be category three. So we did some examples from category one with Grignards and lithium aluminum hydride where it attacks once, and then we spent a lot of time with alcohols attacking aldehydes and ketones, category two. And unfortunately, maybe we won't have too much more time to do too much with that, but there's lots of other examples of attacks in aldehydes and ketones. So now what we have to do is look at the reactions for carboxylic acids and acid derivatives. And in some ways they'll be the same, but in some ways they'll be different. For example, we're not going to use that category one, category two, category three anymore. That doesn't apply to carboxylic acids and acid derivatives. They have their own types of reactions. The general way to write a carboxylic acid derivative is like this. This is a good general way to write a carboxylic acid derivative. There's a carbon and a carbonyl and then some L group. Here the L group is the halide. Here the L group is the oxygen and the carbonyl. Here the L group is the OR. And here the L group is the NH2. So there's lots of different L groups that we can use. And for that matter, in a carboxylic acid, the L group is the OH. Now what's the main basic reaction that happens here? Well, it's nucleophilic attack. The basic reaction is when we have a nucleophile attack this carbonyl. Now, this would also have happened with aldehydes and ketones. But what happens next is different than with aldehydes and ketones. What happens next now is notice that when we had the nucleophile attack, that kicked up electrons onto the carbonyl oxygen. But now the carbonyl oxygen is going to kick its electrons back down. Now in order to do that, we need to make room. And the way we make room for that is by having the L group leave. So that the product looks like this. Now you can see why we call this the L group. L stands for leaving group. The reason we use L for this is because all of these have the potential to be leaving groups. Some of them are good leaving groups and some are bad leaving groups, but they all have the potential to be leaving groups. And now the driving force for these reactions, this is something the second language book sets out well, is that nature likes carbonyls. Nature likes reforming the carbonyl bond. So if possible, we'd like to reform this carbonyl bond, even if it means kicking off a pretty bad leaving group. Even if it means kicking off a pretty bad leaving group, we'd like to reform the carbonyl over here. Now this is what did not happen with aldehydes and ketones. Why didn't this happen with aldehydes and ketones? Because there's nothing that's even a potential leaving group here with the aldehydes and ketones. A carbon chain can't be a leaving group. Or in an aldehyde, a hydrogen can't be a leaving group. All of these could potentially be leaving groups, even if they're not great leaving groups. But there's no way a carbon or a hydrogen can be a leaving group. This is the big reason why there's a big difference between the reactivity for aldehydes and ketones and the reactivity for, aldehyde, for acids and acid derivatives. Aldehydes and ketones have no leaving groups here attached to the carbonyl carbon, but all of these have things that could potentially be leaving groups. It's very important when you start any of these reactions to identify in your mind who the leaving group is going to be. Because once you get halfway through the reaction, it's easy to forget who the leaving group is. For example, let's say that we've gotten this far and we're trying to figure out what's going to happen next. Well, at this point, students tend to get confused. Sometimes they think that this is the leaving group. That doesn't make sense because it already came in, but it's easy to get confused and they forgot this was the nucleophile. Or also, it's easy to think that maybe the oxygen is the leaving group. But no, it's this that's the leaving group. So you need to identify in your mind at the beginning who the leaving group is. The leaving group is this group here that's attached to the carbonyl carbon. Now, in this series here, this at the top is the most reactive. And this down here is the least reactive. This is the order of reactivity.
that means this type of molecule has the easiest time going through this reaction. And this type of molecule has the hardest time going through this type of reaction. Now, why would that be? How do we decide who can go through the reaction easiest? Well, remember that all of these can go through this reaction because they have potential leading groups. So who would be most reactive? The ones with the best leaving groups. Well, are halogens good leaving groups? We've seen that for, since the first semester that neutral halogens are good leaving groups. So it's not surprising that this is at the top. This already comes with a good leaving group. 